guys, come trapping with me today. What all are we going to be trapping today? Raccoons, possums, bobcats, and coyotes. Let's go, boys. My friend Jackson is going to help us set the trap. This is an OBS K9 Extreme foothold. All right, so the most important part of this whole thing is making sure those traps are bedded. Um, if you have any wobble in your trap, um, coyote or bobcat will bug. So four corner tests generally is good for that. Punch it on each four. Make sure it's really bedded before you go to cover your trap. So I like to get my trap set first, and then what I'll do is I'll set my dirt hole about six inches offset to the left a little bit. Everyone does it a little different. That's what works for me. Um, play around with it, see what you guys like. But that four to six inch range generally will catch dogs or cats. So it's a pretty generic set that is successful on a high traffic area. We're coming right here off a road. One thing you can grasp when trapping is always set on sign. That's the biggest takeaway is if you're not setting on sign, you're gonna have trouble catching. So in a high traffic area, intersection roadways you have trail camera info that shows that bobcats or coyotes are in that area that's always a good spot to start um, but for me the foothold dirt hole set or trench set is a meat and potatoes it's very easy to get into it's not real complicated and uh, it has a high success rate try and keep the big clods out good sifter pan this vital trapping is dirty he will get dirty doing this so don't be afraid to get in here and guys don't be scared of your trap make sure you know you pay attention keep your trap pan keep aware of where your trap pans at so I like to keep keep it uncovered and exposed that way I keep awareness of my set where my dirt hole needs to be and I always always have an idea of where my pans at at all times Make sure it's nice and covered. Try and keep the big quads out. And really come in and pack these jaws down nicely. Make sure again that trap is nice embedded where you don't have any wobble or shake in it. Keep the big rocks and debris out of it. I'll leave that pan exposed until my final dirt hole set and then I'll come back in and lightly cover that pan. I want that pan to be the lowest point in my set to where those dogs come in. It's a low point. It's right where their paw wants to be. So now I'm going to come off about the center of that pan, four to six inches. This is a nice backing here, this grass. So what that will do is kind of steer the species or animal into this area right here where they don't want to work it from the back. So we want to keep them away from the backing of the set. That way they don't rob our hole and take our lure and run. Generally, another thing you can factor in is wind direction, you know, north wind, south wind, which way the animals are going to be approaching it. This set right here is pretty good for north or south wind, depending on how they're traveling. So just little things to factor in, um, kind of gets, kind of gets in the weeds a little bit, but all things to factor in. So I'm going to come in right here on this backing and I'm going to start my dirt hole. This is a pretty handy tool. I like to use just a little hammer slash spade. You can just kind of dig it in. I like to keep it at about a 45 degree angle. That way it keeps them from coming around the back and stealing your bait. Kind of water that out. Nice and deep. About the, about the length of your tool is about how deep I try and go. The coyote is looking for the easiest meal he can find. So if he can come by and rob someone else's catch, he's going to do it every time. So that's pretty good right there. All right. So. Now we've got that covered. I'm gonna come in. I do my final prep on the pan. Make sure you get that lightly covered. So nothing crazy there. Try and kind of brush this back in, make it look a little natural, like we haven't been here. And the deal is, guys, coyotes have a great nose on them. I think you do what you can to prevent scent, but at the end of the day, you can do everything right. Those coyotes know you're in here. Um, you're not going to trick them out of that. Their nose is. So superior um, all we can do is you know use gloves where we can use rubber boots but at the end of the day those dogs are going to know you're in here so 
It's just convincing them to take that last step. That's what we're trying to do. So I'm gonna come in, put a little bit of grass and duff in here, nothing too crazy. Just kind of make it look a little bit more natural, not as exposed. Again, keeping our pan kind of more peeling spot to step. I don't like to use any guiding, like sticks or anything. It's kind of seemed to deter coyotes, but use what's there, natural landscape. Got to fluff that in here. Make it look like you weren't here. Clear out that pan. Dog's gonna come in. Paul right there, he's done. What I like to use is lethal injection. This is a loud, loud lure. And what I mean by that, it's got a lot of skunk added in it, so it's pretty smelly. It'll take sheep wool, use that as kind of a visual attractant. This is a spoon I try not to eat my oatmeal with in the morning, but the spoon works good. And I'll take that, get that down that dirt hole. Push it down in there where possum can't come by and rob you. Get it nice, nice and in there. And then I'll add a little bit of urine on that grass, just as kind of an initial smeller. So we'll use a little coyote gland lure here. I generally just like to take a little bit of it. Just kind of throw it back here on the backing. Not too crazy there. Let's keep it kind of basic. We'll just do, we'll actually do bobcat urine on this one. We're putting out some bobcat pee. Just a little urine on the back in there. That set is good to go. We're gonna set this Moultrie camera on this foothold trap we have over here. Should have coyotes and bobcats working the set from both sides. We're gonna set this Moultrie on the downwind side, hopefully catch something getting in the trap. Hoodwork's done, now we wait.